Welcome to the International Tax Course, where you will learn about article-by-article article interpretation of the treaty. If you like this video and want to buy the entire course, you can click the link given in the description below in case you are watching this on the computer. If you are watching this on the mobile, you will have a downward arrow like this, which you can click and then it will give you the description and the link to purchase the entire course. Have a happy learning. Let us now understand about Article 2. What are the taxes which are covered for the purpose of treaty? To give you a background, Article 2 covers what are the types of taxes to which the treaty applies. It is not that the treaty applies to every types of taxes. So let's say for example, if you have value added tax or VAT or service tax, those taxes are not covered by the treaty, right? What we are looking at is mainly income tax, right? And some treaty have provisions which apply not only to income tax, but also to surcharge or cess or other similar levies which are levied by a contracting state. So the first question which comes up to my mind is, why is Article 2 even relevant? There are various reasons which are important to understand why Article 2 is relevant. The first one is that it is only taxes which are covered under Article 2 which are covered by the treaty. So if a person says I have been taxed in India and I want to claim a credit for the tax that I have paid in India in US, right? He is going to get a credit only for taxes which are paid in India and are covered by Article 2 of the India-US Treaty. If the tax that he has paid in India is not covered by Article 2, then he cannot claim a credit for that under the India-USA Double Taxation Avoidance Agreement. The second is, it helps us to ascertain if surcharge is to be applied in addition to tax rates. Now you must be wondering, how does this happen? Generally, when you see the definition of tax in Article 2, you will note that it specifies that not only income tax, but any other levy of a surcharge or certain nature is also to be covered within the definition of tax. So let's say, for example, if tax includes income tax plus surcharge, as per the definition given in Article 2, right? And when you look at the article relating to fee for technical services and it says that in India the tax that has to be withheld is 10%, what that means is by applying the income tax and the surcharge, the total of this has to be 10%. Right? So therefore it helps you to ascertain if surcharge is to be applied in addition to tax rates. The third one is it avoids the need to renegotiate treaty for changes in local levies. Now think of a situation where India or any country for that matter to start with in 2005 had only income taxes. In 2007 it levied income tax but it said that this is a surcharge I am levying. In 2010 it applied an education Cess. Right? Now, if the definition of tax in Article 2 was not there, then what is going to happen is every time a new tax is levied by the source country, India in my example, there will be a need to revise the treaty. Otherwise, any surcharge or education cess which is paid in India, let's say for example by a US tax resident, will not be creditable in US because the treaty will not contain that provision. To deal with such a situation, Article 2 generally provides that tax will not only include tax but it will include any other levy of a similar nature, which means that even surcharge and education cess are included within the definition of tax. And therefore, when I want to claim a credit when I want to eliminate double taxation back in my home country, 
if a US resident wants to do it, he can claim a credit not only for the tax that he pays in India, but also for the surcharge and the education cess. That brings us to our next question as to which taxes are then covered under Article 2. As a general rule, it is only income tax which is covered as a part of Article 2 in DTAAs or treaty as you may call them. Right? But there are certain other points that one needs to note. The first is that indirect taxes like VAT, sales tax, service tax are generally not covered under Article 2. The research and development cess is not covered by Article 2. Now, this is one exception which has been specifically made in the treaty which India has with Netherlands. In the protocol to that, it has been said that research and development cess is not covered by Article 2, which means that if there is a Netherlands company which pays an R&D cess in India, right, it cannot claim a credit for this in Netherlands. Why? Because this is not covered as a part of tax. However, the definition of tax which is given in Article 2 generally does not apply to the non-discrimination clause which is Article 24 and exchange of information clause which is Article 26 which are generally applicable to all taxes. But having said this, it is not a rule of thumb that Article 24 and Article 26 will cover all forms of taxes. Normally what is going to happen is if you look at Article 24, there there is a specific mention that it shall apply to all types of taxes. Similarly, for exchange of information between two countries, again there is a specific mention that provision of Article 1 and Article 2 shall not restrict the exchange of information. Okay, which means that the Article 2 if it covers only specified type of taxes, is not going to limit the application of Article 26. Welcome to the International Tax Course, where you will learn about article by article interpretation of the treaty. If you like this video and want to buy the entire course, you can click the link given in the description below in case you are watching this on the computer. If you are watching this on the mobile, you will have a downward arrow like this, which you can click and then it will give you the description and the link to purchase the entire course. Have a happy learning.